This is Drom Shekasuto. We are learning now chapters of Rabbi Eliezer. We were talking in the first part about Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkinus and explaining his holiness, his, his greatness. And like I told you, we're talking about a real Baal Tshuva, a person that decided to to take himself seriously and to really invest power in Abodat Hashem. A friend asked me yesterday if I believe that we also able to achieve levels of the righteous ones from earlier generations. So I told him that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, wrote in the Likud Moran that every person can achieve the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Moses. And <coughs> I explained to him the reason for that, because also Moses, when he became Moses, it was not because that he was the son of Yocheved and Amram. It was not because that his destiny was to be the leader of our nation in that generation. It was his effort that brought him to the results that he achieved. King David was not the chosen one because of the godly plan. He was chosen because of his kindness, because of how sensitive he was, how much he cared about others, how much he was praying for others. And that's how they achieved their levels. And this is why the Torah, the Bible, is describing for us the life stories of all those righteous ones that we will see from their actions and learn and take lesson for ourselves to know that if we will work like they worked, if we will do as much as we can like our ancestors, if we will take a good um, example from those holy ones, we can achieve their levels as well. For an example, we saw that Moses, the sea being opened for him, not because that he was Moses, because that he was so holy and righteous and pure. Because after a while, we saw after 40 years in the desert, when Am Israel were about to enter the Holy Land of Israel, they had to pass through the Jordan River. So the same thing happened to them. And when the Kohanim, the servants, walked into the Jordan River with Yahshua, that he was the student of Moses, the, the next leader that brought us all into the Holy Land of Israel, the R Jordan River stopped from streaming and like became like a, a frozen wall and was standing and was waiting for Am Israel to walk in dry land. So we see that that miracle took place in the life of our ancestors as well. When Elijah the prophet and his student um, Elisha were walking from one place to, to the other, so Elijah took off his cape and opened the, the river, the Jordan River, and they both passed in it in dry land. And when Elijah went up on his holy chariot with flaming horses to the sky, so then Elisha, his student, came back with his rabbi, with Elijah the prophet's cape, and he opened the Jordan River for himself to cross it alone on his way back. So you see that the same miracle is jumping into the hands, into the power of people. It's in people's hands in one generation and then in a second generation and then after one hundred and two and three and five hundred years and it's continuing. And if you will believe in yourself today, you will see wonders as well. If you will dedicate your life to Hashem like Elijah, like Elisha, like like the Kohanim, like Yoshua Binun, the Creator will stop the sun for you in the noontime, in the middle of the day. Even if it's 3,000 years later, the, the Creator is above time. And we need to learn from those righteous ones that they were not great in their times. They were not great in, in those years. No. They were great for dedicating their lives, for the searching for the truth. And because of that, they achieved what they achieved. And look, a person that started his 
uh, his life of closeness to the Creator in the age of 27 and was learning without eating and like sacrificing himself and doing as much as he can. And your sacrifice does not have to be similar to his sacrifice. You need to sacrifice what the, the Creator will ask from you. You might need to do the opposite of what that he was doing, if that's what the Creator demands from you. Maybe you need to be a father, maybe you need to be a mother, maybe you need to sacrifice hours of learning for sitting and learning and playing with your children. Maybe you need to, to, to sacrifice your hours of hobbies for spending time with your wife and talking deep emotional conversations with her. And that's what that will bring you to those higher levels that regular people almost never achieve because of their laziness, because they're not choosing right. So we need to ask the Creator, what do you want from me? Like they were asking the Creator, what do you want from me? What can I do for you? What's your will from me? And when you hear the inner voice of your soul that is telling you, be honest, be sincere, with your beloved ones, about your job, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't be bent and twisted and awful and selfish, be nicer, be more kind, and on and on and on. You need to follow that inner voice that is speaking to you from within, using your heart as, as a speaker. So, in this learning that we're learning about Rabbi Eliezer ben Orkenus, we must remember that we're talking about a person that two hours ago didn't know how to say Kriyat Shema, didn't know how to say the blessing on the food, didn't know how to stand Shmona Esre, didn't know Halakha. It was hard for him to read, it was hard for him to learn. It would take Rabban Yochanan, his rabbi from Jerusalem, to teach him every halakha, every Jewish rule. For two weeks he had to put it into his mind. He could not remember. It was hard for him to remember. He was not digesting the learning. He was not understanding it. It was hard work for him, huge, great labor. But he dedicated and he invested and that's what he achieved that we can learn from Him, that He was the one that taught us and told us how the creation took place, how the Creator created the sky and the angels and the fire of flesh and bones, means the soul of a person, and the fire of hell. And He's saying to us that the sky and the earth been created in the first day, like the verse is saying, and when the Creator created the sky, so not only the regular sky that we look that built and, and made out of air, also Rakia She'al Rashe Dalet Hachayot, also the spiritual sky that is above the heads of four holy animals, means from the prophet, the, the prophecy of the prophet Yechezkel, Yechezkel ben Buzi, that he was the righteous man, the prophet that was able to see the holy chariot of heaven. And he saw that there was a figure above the heads of the holy animals, that they are the holy angels that are in the sky. Ke'ein hakera chanora, that seems like the, the great ice, some spiritual sight that he was able to, to visualize. And what does it mean that it seems like that great ice, like precious stones and rubies, and it's shining on all over the sky, all over the sky like a candle that's in the house, and like the sun that is shining in the noontime. So there is some kind of frozen ice shining like precious stones, above the heads of the holy angels that are riding the holy chariot of heaven and they are shining the sky, they're shining heaven. And the light is on his side and in the side of the Creator. And Kmoto and like him, the righteous ones are future to illuminate and the future to come. Like it says, 
והמשכילים יזהירו that the wise people, the righteous ones, will shine כזוהר הרקיע, like the light, like the illumination of the sky. And we're talking about the spiritual sky, not the light of the sun. We're talking about that great ice that is shining the spiritual sky, the spiritual heaven. ואילולי הרקיע ההוא, and without that sky, היה העולם נבלע מן המים שלמעלה ממנו. The world could have been swallowed into the divine water that is above. Like we learn in the biblical breakdown, that when the Creator created heaven and earth, so He separated the sky from, from He separated the divine water from the feminine water by the sky. So the sky is not only the air, oxygen that we see in front of our eyes, it's also the spiritual sky that is holding back, that is holding the divine water from swallowing the feminine water back to its original place. So this is the sky that is holding the structure, that is holding heaven and earth to in balance with a certain separation that is still needed. Those are the understandings. This is the learning of a person that started his learning in the age of 27. I'm not going to stop reminding you of your greatness. I'm not going to stop reminding you of your true potential, how much you can achieve. And this is how the Creator is separating and defining between one kind of water to the next. And the angels that have been created in the second day, when they're being sent by His words, they become spirits. And when they're serving in front of Him, they become, became of fire. The angels are changing forms. When they're coming down to this world, they become angels of spirit, like air. They disappear. You can't see them. Suddenly they're here, suddenly they're there. They're going with the wind. They're disappearing from our eyes. But when they are over there in heaven, serving in front of the Creator, they become angels of fire. They have fiery uh, figure. And on that, the verse is saying in the book of Tehillim, the Psalms of King David, that he makes his angels to be spirits, but when they're serving in front of him, flaming fire, very hot fire. There are four great groups of angels that are praising the Creator. The first camp of angels, first group under the supervision and leadership of the angel Michael to, to the right. The second group of angels to the left by Gavriel. Machane Shlishit, the third one of Uriel. And they are in front of the Holy Chariot. Machane Revi'it, the fourth one of Raphael, the angel that is in charge on the healing of the world. Milacharav, he is behind the Holy Chariot of Heaven. Those are the four groups of angels that are surrounding from four wings the Holy Chariot of Heaven. Ushchinato shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Godly Spirit of the Creator Ba'emtza is in the middle, in the center Ve'hu and He, Himself, the Creator Yoshev al Kiseh Ram Venisa is sitting on His throne of honor that is high and divine Ve'kiseo Gavoha and His throne is high Ve'talui lemala ba'avir and is hanged above in the air, above the surface and to see his honor is similar to electricity it's like you can see it it's so bright those are concepts and words that are being used for us for our mind to grasp this is the impression of Yechezkel ben Buzi the prophet that's how it seems to him when he saw that great spiritual sight שנאמר, like that it been said in Yechezkel, ואראה כאין חשמל. I saw something that looks like electricity.
לייק. והתרה נתונה בראשו, and a great crown on his head, and the name is written on his forehead. And his eyes are wandering and looking and seeing the wide world, the, all of the land, half of it of fire and half of it of snow. When he's looking to the world, so half of his eyesight looks like fire and half of his eyesight looks as... Um, Like, like snow. Mimino, from its right you can find life and from his left you can find death. And there are more angels that have been created that they are serving in front of him. And there are more and more explanations here, but I think it's enough for one day. So we're going to continue in the next session. Thank you so much and be blessed. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.